Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and in today's episode we're gonna be playing with some loved and hated at the same time deck of all time which is obviously Super Ape 2.6 and yeah we're gonna start off against Tehane Haha if I pronounce it correctly sorry for my mistakes if there were any I'm still yet to learn Spanish 100% so for those who don't get it, I'm still in this stage of learning and I still may mispronounce some things, so uh, yeah. But I'm learning, so uh, we'll get there eventually. My opponent actually will play some balloon. I hope that Gunner will actually stop to help out with defense and I actually hope that it's gonna be perfect defense and there we go. Unfortunately, balloon is still under port in Boom Arena. Devs didn't make any changes to actually make it more or less viable. It's just still in this state where it's absolutely nice to use if you have a correct deck, but uh, if your opponent has Bilnik, you will absolutely get nowhere. And unfortunately, most uh, players uh, will play building because there's pretty much no downside uh, to playing that, my opponent will actually go for some digger and I'm gonna go for kite which is absolutely not it. Oh my god, that's gonna be a tough one. Yep. So, I actually missed the kite on this explorer but fortunately for us we still are in a huge lead so it didn't really matter. I wanted to get this uh, win very quickly but it looks like Demo pond even though he lost his uh, tower, he didn't lose his will to fight and that's why we're gonna have to keep fighting unfortunately or fortunately for the sake of the video, you never know. I'm gonna actually put cannon right now because I don't want to uh, risk the same miss as the previous one. Wiseman would say I should uh, try the kite uh, anyway because, well, <coughs> he didn't have too big of an impact and it's for the sake of improvement but at the same time I want to just use the plant and try it path already and get the tree star as soon as it's physically possible because it looks like my opponent won't be capable of defending it and here it is the tree star against first guy who played Drunker Room Freeze. Sarah's not right for using this deck but at the same time we're running 2.6 so who we are to talk. I know that many of you will hate this deck, I honestly think it's the best deck to start your uh, Boom Arena journey, to actually learn many micro interactions and strategical interactions, and uh, yeah, it's obviously annoying and it's not meta anymore for like 7 years or so, maybe I over exaggerated, but it's not meta for a long time, Although it's probably the most used deck in the game, so uh, yeah, you will face it uh, many times. Uh, either way, I'm yapping too much, let's jump to the game number two. And the next game will be against Putokien Piedra. Pierda, sorry, I cannot, uh, I cannot pronounce it. Um, he's gonna be playing a Bone Blasters, which is absolutely classical. A choice it kind of suggests me two decks that can uh, go from there and yeah that's gonna be a default deck other one would be a uh, Remy Alice deck which is also very popular especially amongst like lower rated players for some inexplicable reason maybe it's because it's a very long I mean it's a very old meta uh, in Boomarina that's absolutely not uh, viable right now Digger got nerfed uh, very long time ago and uh, yeah that's not a valid play to go unless you are very skilled obviously Ramiel is deck known as a pro player warm-up uh, deck very uh, difficult to master but uh, when you do you are pretty much unstoppable also I forgot that skeletons do not stop the bomb blasters completely so I have to resort to a can pretty much wasted one mana but what you're gonna do I'm gonna just wait for my opponent to play something, which is weird. I'm gonna just play a flying bomb because honestly I don't know what was the purpose. I don't even... I mean, Gunner should be able to reach it, but I didn't want to risk it. Also, uh, yeah, I want to just keep the Gunner uh, on the defense. 
so it gets uh, value 100% of the time. I'm gonna play Ice Tiny because I'm pretty sure it's gonna splash both archers and there we go. I'm gonna play Explorer here just to Kaidi Bomb Skeleton. I'm gonna suck these Bomb Blasters. Right now I'm not trying to get uh, any flashy moves. I'm gonna try to just play very principled moves that just so you guys can navigate this matchup as well, because obviously I could have uh, taken a better interaction here and there, but then first of all your opponent can usually predict these interactions, so like it's not 100% foolproof. Right now I'm just playing solid gameplay, which should be uh, always working, no matter what uh, your opponent is. Opponent will be actually going for an archer's very weird choice, because they will just get cleaned off the board. I'm gonna play guard on defense because my opponent uh, doesn't reassemble uh, any uh, sophisticated uh, maneuvers. I'm gonna clean the stone phones and right now, yeah, my opponent will just give up because he doesn't have any op he doesn't find any opening in the position. Also, this gunner, very sad to see, he didn't go for the uh, for the cannon as I have to spend something more and yeah. It's gonna be game number two against default deck. I would say very nice matchup for us. So I won't uh, uh, be I won't be explaining anymore. Let's just jump to the game number three. And the next game will be against Pito Galactico, also with zero mels. So very likely that okay, he actually won't be using a default deck. That's a already a huge W in Boom Arena community because obviously using a default deck or 2.6. Is not something impressive and to brag about. My opponent will be actually using a Devil Horde, which is already a very offbeat uh, option. And I'm gonna pay for my greedness because obviously I wanted this Ice Tiny to jump onto everything, and that would have been a very nice trade. But I uh, misplayed the Ice Tiny. It didn't jump. It got killed, and it got no damage. So I had to react quick. I had to react fast and I had to like minimize the potential damage. My opponent will actually play Mana Collector, which I think is okay play. Obviously, it's gonna mean that I'll have to make a choice in the future on what to use my Flying Bomb on Pumps or on Devil Horde. And since I kinda trust in my Micro, I'm gonna keep playing Ice Tinies on the Devil Horde because it's like the best counter known to date. I'm gonna actually play Skeletons here because I know for a fact, okay, that's 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 not good in direction. He's getting actually a lot more damage than I would ever anticipate, and he's gonna get a helicopter, so I'm gonna just quickly snipe it. Obviously, it's not a super good trade, but at the same time, yeah, I don't mind it because right now I can just play Ice Tiny, and this time, hopefully, I'm not gonna mess this uh, very easy interaction. I'm gonna play Super Ape just to kite everything. This ghost should be uh, following Super Ape, and right now I'm gonna just play Flying Bomb, which gives my opponent one timing, one opportunity and one chance only, when he'll be uh, a lot of mana ahead out of me. I mean, at this point he should be already at 10 mana, and if he uses it right, it's gonna be very tough for me to stop his push, but if he doesn't, I'm gonna just easily clean up his, um, his push, so yeah. Uh, Let's see how it's gonna turn out. He actually plays a helicopter and he doesn't block it with twins. Actually, I saw it there uh, an attempt, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, whoever you're cheering for, uh, my opponent fails. And that's why I'm gonna be uh, going for the Super Ape. Unfortunately, uh, right now, uh, the gunner doesn't get a second shot on the devil very quickly, so uh, my Super Ape dies instantly after getting this tower, but... It gets the tower, so it's <coughs> the most important part at the very least. I'm gonna play Khan just for the safety, even though I have this game wrapped up. Anyway, I'm gonna just play Skeletons to preserve my Khan alive, and that's gonna be it for today. I mean, for uh, this game. Uh, very easy, very simple, with a slight misstep at the very beginning, but like you could have seen, it was very uh, easy for us to just come back and uh, forget about it completely. So yeah, it's gonna be the game number 3, let's jump to the game number 4. And the next opponent of today's video will be Mando with 18 males and starting with Ice Tiny. Obviously, I kinda have to already expect some kind of decks already, 
and first of all yeah obviously it's gonna be a 2.6 mirror matchup so I honestly would be very disappointed if I didn't get this matchup right off the bat because it's one of the most common matchups honestly in Boom Arena so if you want to you kinda have to know how to navigate that and my opponent will actually play Swordsman so my opponent not playing the 100% uh, 100% uh, uh, Super Ape 2.6 but maybe he's just playing uh, Super Ape Psycho and that should be enough as well. Obviously, right now my opponent very aggressive with the Super Ape. I think I was just barely on time with the cannon. So yeah, he's gonna be having a can already. He's also cycling very aggressively, so definitely good for him because he held this push. I honestly thought uh, with this poor of a can placement he shouldn't be going anywhere, but... Yeah, he, he held somehow and props uh, to him for that. I'm gonna just play Ice Tiny. I'm gonna cycle my Skeletons and I'm gonna instantly pressure on the opposite side because I know for sure right now he has no response and he should be okay. He... And here I am biting my words once again because he absolutely has a cannon because he was cycling so fast and right now he should be going for the Super Ape himself before this gunner. Unless he doesn't want to, obviously that's the case. That's the option as well. I don't know if very likely, but yeah. I'm gonna go for another Explorer Super A because it's pretty much the strongest timing we can get in this kind of matchup. He goes for the counter play and doesn't defend, which is definitely a mistake. You absolutely cannot. Uh, make such openings in this kind of matchup. We're gonna just go for another super ape since we've seen that my opponent has a uh, lot of trouble defending that. He's gonna be actually able to defend this uh, super ape quite well. It gets only one shot, and uh, with him not being able to play cannon, it was definitely a hard task for him uh, to defend this. He's gonna get a prediction uh, flying bomb on my. Uh, and I can, which is definitely, definitely nice play for him. Right now, I think I'm gonna just keep pounding because I know that he kinda doesn't know how to defend. And attacking actually isn't going too badly for him, so uh, obviously I'm gonna be sticking to the part of the matchup where I'm the stronger one. So yeah, it's gonna be GG's. He actually kinda woke up in the double mana that's when he kind of started making some plays but either way i think the matchup was uh, very correctly played by us so a uh, couple of uh, tips F first tip basically try to cycle as many super apes as physically possible Se second tip if you see your opponent cycling super apes too fast you can start playing gunners and get the map control and obviously with map control you can play whatever you like because you will be winning and uh, third tip, if you are behind, do not play Flying Bomb uh, under no circumstance. Like, try to stack gunners, try to play Super Apes in the back, basically try to create the messy game where your opponent will have to, like, adapt to your gameplay. Because if you will start playing Flying Bombs, your opponent will start playing Flying Bombs as well and you will lose on the spell damage. So that's one, deta one takeaway that you don't want to... That we want to be making. Uh, either way, I think that should be all for the Super Ape Mirror, and let's jump to the last game of today's video. And the last game of today's video will be against Ganesh Buddha with 202 medals. He already says nice play as well, very cultured man to see as well. We're gonna play Rolling Steel against his longsword. Very unfortunate that we don't have skeletons because not only it's the uh, better trade. I would actually also keep the explorer for the uh, for the other circumstances where it may be more required. Uh, my opponent will be playing a mother skeleton, which is definitely a tricky pick. I'm gonna try to minimize the damage out of it. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to let the bomber to hit once, but it won't even hit once. So very cool to see that. I'm gonna play explorer in the back since I know he has a long sword for my super ape there's no uh, reason for me to play it unless he plays brute in the back that's the exact timing when you want to play super ape even though my opponent has the longsword 
it's absolutely fine because right now we kind of split his attention, split the damage and I actually think I misplayed the can while explaining it, it all, which would be very hilarious. Actually, I didn't. I didn't miss the can, which is very hilarious. I didn't know that uh, Brook is is getting kited by this position, but it's very cool to see. Magano should be staying on my side for quite a bit more. And right now, I think I'm gonna actually go very aggressively because, oh my god, oh my god, my man is in trouble. The gunner is on the tower. And all I have to do right now is play rolling still. He should be absolutely screwed right now. Oh no. That's not the good news for my man Gare Ganesh Buddha. Because right now he'll be having a very tough time coming back into this game. He actually hits the prediction on my gunner, which is very cute. He's gonna get bullets as well. I think I should be able to and get a counter play but at the same time I'm gonna just bait his long sword or devils <coughs> on this side where I uh, don't want to push and I'm gonna just push on the weak side tower which is definitely the correct call I'm gonna play some <coughs> rolling steel right here I'm gonna play explorer just to kill his bomber with death nova perfect but right now I actually Probably should be uh, countering his Necromancer. But I don't really care because I can just get away with defending with small spells and small troops. That's gonna be GG's nice plate in the last game of today's video. Unfortunately for Ganesh Bura because he got absolutely obliterated in this match. Kaida didn't understand what was the dynamics and we were also always on time. That's also a very important thing of playing Super 8 2.6 is knowing when to attack and when not to attack. That's also very important and if you know when uh, not to attack, you avoid many mistakes that kind of lead you to defeat if you don't know what you're doing. And with that being said, I think that's gonna be a nice ending for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I post Boomerang content every single day and you definitely don't want to miss out. So yeah, once again, thanks for watching. I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Marina.